the short answer is yes, but if you are confident in your timing, the chances are low. Hi, my name is Tori and I am a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic dysfunction, which means part of what I treat is sexual dysfunction. And I get this question a lot in clinic, the can I get pregnant on my period question. What I will say is that a lot of the time I think that I might be the first healthcare provider that the woman in front of me is asking about this. Um, this is an honor and a privilege and I always feel so excited that someone feels comfortable enough with me to ask me that kind of question. But there seems to be this sort of shame or embarrassment or some feeling of that sort around the question. And I like to knock that ish out fast. It's like you want to have pleasurable, consensual, unprotected sex with your man. Like, girl, yes, I want you to too. Ask me about it. Let's talk about it. So you want to have some sexy time on your period. Don't feel weird about it. You have my full support as long as it is consensual and all of those things feel right and good to you. So can you get pregnant on your period? Let's answer the question. The short answer is yes, but if you are confident in your timing, the chances are low. As always with all of my videos, I want you to understand why that's the answer. And so there are a few things that you need to know first before you can fully understand why that's my answer. You need to have a basic understanding of your reproductive system, a basic understanding of your cycle. You need to be sure that the bleeding that you're experiencing is for sure your period and not something else. You need to understand how sperm survive in your vagina and you need to know how long sperm can live. So the female reproductive system, we are going to explain this in both directions. And what I mean when I say that is first we're going to start at the very bottom at the vagina and we're going to work our way up to the ovaries and then to really cement it in we're gonna start at the ovaries and work our way down into the vagina so let's start at the bottom and work our way up if we are starting at the very bottom that would be your vagina the vagina is where the penis goes in heterosexual sex the next stop, the thing that connects your vagina to your uterus is called your cervix. And then the uterus itself, this is where babies grow, this is where sperm are hoping to travel to meet an egg and fertilize it. This is also where period blood comes from. It is the walls of your uterus that get thick in preparation for pregnancy and then when you don't get pregnant you shed that lining that thick uterine lining so vagina cervix connects vagina to uterus and then you have the arms of the uterus which are the fallopian tubes which end up connecting to the ovaries so now let's work our way from top to the bottom so we're starting now in the ovaries the ovaries are where your eggs are. Your eggs are stored here in the ovaries, they're immature, and then once an egg matures, it travels from your ovary down your fallopian tube into the uterus. If the egg isn't fertilized, it dies, you get your period, you shed the lining of the uterus, it goes from your uterus through your cervix and out of your vagina as a period. If the egg is fertilized and you become pregnant, then a baby grows in your uterus when it's time to deliver the baby. The cervix under the uterus expands, the uterus contracts and pushes the baby out of the uterus through the cervix and then finally out of your vaginal canal or your vagina into the world. And that is a quick recap of your female reproductive system. Next thing that you need to have a basic understanding of is your cycle. So let's break down your cycle. It can be broken down into four parts. Part number one would be your period or menstruation. Part number two is called the follicular phase. Part number three is ovulation. And final part, part number four is called the luteal phase. So your period or menstruation usually lasts three to seven days menstruation or your period this is where you are shedding that thick lining of the uterus this is where you are actively bleeding the next part the follicular phase technically your period or menstruation is a part of this phase so technically the follicular phase starts the day that you start bleeding and ends the day that ovulation starts we talked about how eggs immature eggs live in your ovary they mature here travel down the fallopian tube and into the uterus the follicular phase is called the follicular phase because it is this part of your cycle where the ovaries 
produce follicles. Follicles just to house immature eggs. The growth of these follicles is what stimulates the uterus lining to thicken in preparation for a potential pregnancy. And then we move on to ovulation. Ovulation usually happens in the middle-ish of your cycle. Ovulation is the release of a mature egg from your ovary that follows the fallopian tube into the uterus. That egg will hang out in your uterus for about 24 hours and if a sperm doesn't come and fertilize the egg then the egg will die the final part that we talked about the final phase is the luteal phase the luteal phase garners more details than I have time to describe in this video so for simplicity's sake it is during this phase that a fertilized egg either implants in the uterus and we start growing a baby we become pregnant or the egg isn't fertilized and your body our bodies start preparing to shed the lining of the uterus AKA our bodies start preparing for menstruation or our periods. And then the cycle repeats. So with an overview of your reproductive system in mind and with an overview of your cycle in mind, the next thing that you need to be sure about is that the blood that you are bleeding is truly your menstrual blood, is truly your period blood, and isn't some other form of spotting or breakthrough bleeding. Some women will have breakthrough bleeding while they're ovulating, which is when they are incredibly fertile. We are the most fertile when we are ovulating. So if you aren't sure, if you're someone where maybe you're just coming off of the pill and you're like, ah, is this my period? Am I spotting? What's going on? I would proceed with caution. I would not try to have unprotected sex unless you were sure that it's actually your period and not some other form of bleeding. On to sperm and how they survive in your vagina. What is important to understand here is that your vagina is naturally acidic. Sperm can't live in your vagina's natural environment without some help. Sperm get the help that they need to survive in your vagina from your cervix. That white stuff that you find in your underwear that everyone calls discharge is actually a cervical fluid. Your cervix produces different kinds of cervical fluid throughout the cycle depending on where you are in your cycle. Around ovulation, your cervix produces a lot of almost egg whitey, very creamy cervical fluid in order for sperm to be able to survive in the vaginal canal and swim up the vagina through the cervix and into the uterus so that you can get pregnant. With the right kind of cervical fluid, sperm can survive in your vagina anywhere from three to five days. So now we can finally cycle back to the getting pregnant on your period part. If you're at the end of your period, like let's say you have a seven day period and you're on like day six or seven of your period, you might be producing some cervical fluid now because you're towards the end of menstruation. It's not that thick egg whitey stuff that I was talking about, but it's still cervical fluid. And so in theory, with the right cervical fluid, sperm could survive in your vagina like we talked about anywhere from three to five days. If you end up ovulating earlier than usual, even five days after the day that you had unprotected sex, you could get pregnant. So my rule of thumb with my fiance and the rule of thumb for most natural birth control methods, fertility awareness methods, is that the first three days of your true period, as long as it is actually your period, are safe. It is believed that those first three days you are most likely infertile. So like I said, with my fiance, we say those first three days, the chances are very, 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 very low that I would conceive. The chances are very, very, very low that I'm fertile. And so those first three days are a green light, but we do not risk it after the first three days. And I don't think that you should either. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel for more content content surrounding pelvic health. If you have any content suggestions, if you have a topic that you want me to cover, if you have a question that you want me to answer, please put that suggestion or question in the comment section below. I am super open to all of your ideas. Thanks again for watching. I hope that this was helpful and fully answered your question. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.